Good evening and welcome to the checkpoint. Our guest tonight is Yankubakoli, the outgoing mayor of the Kanifin Municipality Council. The checkpoint went to meet him. For more, follow up like I see on this interview. Yankubakoli, mayor of the Kanifin Municipality, welcome to the checkpoint. Thank you. You are the mayor of the largest municipality in the Gambia and you've been in this position for a while. What are your achievements? Alhamdulillah, 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 to talk more about your achievement, but notwithstanding, I can say a little that I have done uh, that people can see uh, they are visible. That uh, uh, I know I've built school, I've built a high school for this municipality, which I think I put. Which as, high school is that? That's the uh, now Charles Jow, former July 22nd Academy. Uh, the senior secondary school, I built it 100% funded by KMC. KMC. Uh, we've built markets that we funded 100%. So at various ends, we've, we've put up uh, routes at so many areas, at some areas within the municipality. Routes within the municipality? Yeah, sure. We've done that. We've uh, those, all those things are, uh, you know, you go by GRTS uh, records, you'll see them. I've made influence onto so many developments that happened within my municipality during the former regime. You know, so I know I've, I'll not say I've done a lot, but I would love the people to... to you want the people to speak for themselves? Yeah, that's better. That's how I see, that's how I would rate my achievement within the municipality. Yeah, but you can speak for yourself too, but we'll expand on that later. Like, uh, some of the basic things like waste management, uh, it's not, KMC is not doing very well when it comes to waste management, and these are basic things. No. If you have to see, recount your achievements. You see, you see, people don't understand what mm. uh, waste management is, it's very expensive. Is the most expensive thing one can find within the operations of council. And you know, it does not affect us alone as a council or as a country, but you looked at around our surrounding, our, uh, you know, countries that are our neighbors, and you go beyond, you'll know because we've been traveling equally to see other areas and study, you know, the best practice so that we can equally implement it within this country. But do we need to compare ourselves with countries that are not doing well in waste management? If you, want to, if you want to have successes, you have to compare. With the best, not the worst. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Even if you go to, even if you go to the Western countries, you'll see it there. If you travel, you know there are, garbage is expensive, and you know, a poor country like the Gambia, and a council like mine, would definitely find it very difficult to do it alone. So you have to engage partners, work with partners, and see that you you you've got. But I said, like I said, I that's in in many of my interviews. Yeah, you call the council poor, but this is the largest municipality in the Gambia. We expect it to we get a lot of revenue, a lot of hotels, markets in this area. No, you see, that's why. Uh, you know, the outside, I would never know what's happening here unless and until the person comes. This is why I'm very happy that there are so many people who are opting to be mayors. You know, I'm very happy that after there are so many people who are going out to look for the position. And maybe if they come here, they will equally explain exactly what I'm, that I'm saying. You know, in West Collection and uh, the way uh, the people take uh, the council, the KMC, yes, if in the Gambia, we can still call ourselves the lead council, and uh, and that's the truth uh, that we do and others follow. Uh, if you looked at the weight collection more of back hotel dom side, it's a problem. We've engaged a lot of international partners in it. No, we've moved beyond waste. What I'm saying is, like you are the largest, 
you yes. must have revenue. Yes, you must have revenue. Yes. The revenue is put into the best use, the best for the municipality. There are so many because there is there is. That's but you cannot even money. pay street lights. Navek has no, just no, no, decided no. to see, cut these days on off. You see, the Navek street lights are not sustainable. Why? Mr. Soul cannot pay it. To say the truth, right now they are uh, we owing them about on street lights alone. But it's only only street lights. 84 million that they are talking about is about 84 million. You go to other countries, over 100 and something million. This was created by cent the central government and imposed onto us. When you were a mayor? Yeah, what I'm still mayor. You, what did you say? Of course, we cast, we've, we've, we've protested, we've made a lot of meetings about it, that councils cannot sustain the street lights. And you talked about the hotels and, you know, we have lost a lot of revenues also onto line ministries. You talked about hotels. The license of hotels are collected by the GTB. If you talked about, they collect up to the motels that are inside our town. No, we, no, we know that. What do you mean is, if you have hotels, there's a lot of economic activity. So that generates income on the other side. No, that's what I'm telling you. Exactly, that's what I'm telling you. If you talk about hotels, you are talking about what we generate from all those. That we are not generating, we are generating just a little out of it. So, uh, most people uh, may take it that way. But for us in council, we know, and, as, and I know my administration. But is that I'm not very honest really, to my to my to my to the people that I'm leading? Yes, is that not a pessimistic way of looking at it? That this thing, there is no solution. No, that, you see... Because well, we're saying if other, come, other people come in, you are happy they are running for mayor, when they come, they're going to find the same challenges. Yeah, because it's a challenge. That's a pessimistic well, that's life. way of looking at it. No, 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 that's life. You know, you do what is best or you think is the best of your ability, and anybody who comes next continues from that point. Like whatever we have done, uh, or I have, during my time, uh, anybody who comes in, will start from that point and continue. There is no jealousy in it. There is nothing. This is why we have gone further uh, to look for a new office complex, to to look to do certain to do to you know to to have more uh, more more areas to build. Uh, you know we have that and more routes to construct again. And those. Once I may fall onto the next uh, mayor's term. So, for us. Talking about roads, just a few meters away from this office, you see open gutters. Yeah, those, you know, there are some areas that are not the responsibilities of the municipality. Those are for the center. You know, you have a secondary road. All the secondary roads, we are in charge of secondary roads. And uh, the highways and all the roads are government. Okay, we're still on this revenue. Have you ever been audited? That is the KMC. Oh, yes. When last were you audited? Not even long ago. How long is long ago? About less than a month. Less than a month ago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We've audited, we've been audited. We, I was, uh, the council was audited. And uh, they sent us our results. It was, it was good. And then, excuse me, and then, uh, you know, they came again. Uh, that one I see it as it's, it's because uh, Yelkuba is the mayor and he is not part of the coalition. So they decided to do another auditing again. That we are waiting for their results. Waiting for the results. When last did you face the Park Peck Committee? Never. I've never faced never. them. Never. KMC has never? Never. Why that? We were preparing ourselves, they invited us, but before time, they changed the, the, the timing and date, so we're still waiting for them. So it's from them, not from, not from, not from the KMC? No, no, no. It's the National Assembly? No, not, not. For more than 10 years, you've never faced them? Never. Never. How does that tell us about accountability at the KMC? KMC is very accountable, because any time you want to know about us, you come. We, we invite you. This is why we've been audited every year. Yeah, we, are, we, are in, we, are, we are audited every year. 
You don't think it would have been better if we faced the Park Peck Committee, that is the public accounts? Should, I, should I do that? No. They are to, in fact, all the people that are facing the, uh, the Park Peck are invited. You were never invited? No. Never? No, no council was invited except last, uh, the, was it last year? Then the other the area councils were invited, and then we are to follow both uh, KM and uh, Banjul, and we are never called again. They give us a day before the date, it, it there was a change. They change the date and give us another day. And now our people are ready, preparing for that day. How many people do you have on your payroll, that is the KMC? Uh, right now, I cannot uh, vividly recall, but I know I'm above 1,000. 1,000 employees? Yes. Are you understaffed or overstaffed? I could not call it understaffed. I could not call it overstaffed. What I know is uh, uh, this is a council that is uh, for the people. And uh, if we always be mindful for the 6040 uh, that uh, uh, we will work on as uh, directed by the Act. So I know we are not overstaffed. KMC is not overstaffed. KMC is not overstaffed. No. There's this allegation that KMC funds were used for political reasons or to fund political activities in the past. What is your response? Never. That has never happened. KMC has never. No, see, people people don't even understand. You know, the, the thing is, uh, I can say like uh, if when there is change, you see a lot of talks, you see a lot of watch, you see people misdirecting or misinforming themselves on issues that they don't know about. KMC is open for everybody to come and see. Our accounts are open for everybody to come and see. If at all, that the, then it will have been picked by the auditors. So it never happened? I've never seen it. I've never seen it. And people should understand also that there is separation between the mayor and the administration. You know, my role is to safeguard the policies of council and government. And there is, a, there is an administration that is doing the day-to-day -day running of the municipality. So you can see, even the accounts of council don't pass through me. They don't pass through the mayor? I don't even sign. Who signs? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not signature to Good evening and welcome to the checkpoint. Our guest tonight is Yankubakoli, the outgoing mayor of the Carnifin Municipality Council. The checkpoint went to meet him. For more, follow up I see on this interview. Yankubakoli, mayor of the Carnifin Municipality, welcome to the checkpoint. Thank you. You are the mayor of the largest municipality in the Gambia and you've been in this position for a while. What are your achievements? Alhamdulillah, 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 It is true, I've been here for a while now. You know, achievements are determined by the people uh, that you are serving. Normally, you don't talk about what you achieve directly because the people that, uh, you know, put you in here that you are servicing, I think those are the better people to talk more about your achievement, but notwithstanding, I can say a little that I have done, uh, that people can see uh, they are visible, that uh, 
Uh, I know I've built school, I've built a high school for this municipality, which I think I put... Which high school is that? That's the uh, now Charles Jow, former July 22nd Academy. Uh, the senior secondary school, I built it 100% funded by KMC. KMC. Uh, we've built markets that we funded 100%, so at various ends. We've, we've put up uh, routes at so many areas, at some areas within the municipality. Routes within the municipality? Yeah, sure. We've done that. We've, uh, those, all those things are, you know, you go by GRTS uh, records, you'll see them. I've made influence onto so many developments that happens within my municipality during the former regime. You know, so I know I've I'll not say I've done a lot, but I would love the people to... to you want the people to speak for themselves? Yeah, that's better. That's how I see, that's how I would rate my achievement within the municipality. Yeah, but you can speak for yourself too, but we'll expand on that later. Like, uh, some of the basic things like waste management, uh, it's not... KMC is not doing very well when it comes to waste management, and these are basic things. No... If you have to see, recount your achievements... You see, you see people don't understand what... Mm. Uh, Waste management is, is very expensive. It's the most expensive thing one can find within the operations of council. And you know, it does not affect us alone as a council or as a country, but you looked at around our surrounding, our, uh, you know, countries that are our neighbors, and you go beyond, you'll know because we've been traveling equally to see other areas and study you know, the best practice so that we can equally implement it within this country. But do we need to compare ourselves with countries that are not doing well in waste management? If you, want to, if you want to have successes, you have to compare. With the best, not the worst. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Even if you go to, even if you go to the Western countries, you'll see it there. If you travel, you know there are, garbage is expensive. And, you know, a poor country like the Gambia, and a council like mine would definitely find it very difficult to do it alone. So you have to engage partners, work with partners, and see that you you you've got. But I said, like I said, I that's in in many of my interviews. Yeah, you call the council poor, but this is the largest municipality in the Gambia. We expect it to we get a lot of revenue, a lot of hotels, markets in this area. No, you see, that's why. Uh, you know, the outside, I would never know what's happening here unless and until the person comes. This is why I'm very happy that there are so many people who are opting to be mayors. You know, I'm very happy that after there are so many people who are going out to look for the position. And maybe if they come here, they will equally explain exactly what I'm, that I'm saying. You know, in West Collection and uh, the way uh, the people take uh, the council, the KMC, yes, if... You can see the number of waste generated a day. And if you go to the dump side, you'll see how many, dump, how many tons we dump a day. We receive at the dump side. You looked at the, the size of the population, like I said before. That makes it a big challenge. Yes, but you sort of have plans, knowing that you have a very big population. There are a lot of plans put in place, a lot of it. We, put, we have a strategic plan. A five-year strategic plan is a little bit away from me, otherwise I would have shown it to you. We have a five-year strategic plan for waste management. And uh, if you want it, we can, we, can, we can give you one, and you looked at it, and then you'll know that KMC is on the right footing. Yes, uh, but it's taking too long a time. Yeah, but that's how it stands. And sports, there are no major up to standard sports facilities within the KMC. And you have a huge youth population, apart from the independent stadium. I, I thank Allah, I thank Allah that uh, if you go to this, uh, to this sports, uh, they will tell you, the youth will tell you that I participate 
very well and I champion the, the, the course of the youth. But have you built any sports or sporting infrastructure uh, during your course, time? Uh, of course, during my time? Uh, no, I haven't done one yet. The only one that I did is I bought an area for uh, Moyo Field. I bought it for the youths of Saracuna and Bundo and Sinbakote, they call Mboyo Field, and now we are on the virtue of developing it to be a standard field. The other fields, what I found, uh, that is Serekunda West, uh, Pakao, East. Those are the three fields that I, I officially found in this municipality. And what we did is, when I came up, is to give they used to get control of it and let them be the ones who will be in charge of those areas and develop it and we subsidize as as they need be. Have you built any green parks? Uh, green parks, we only have the Bova Zone that we changing now to a commercial center. But the Bova Zone is far from being green. No, it's not green now. It's not green now. So maybe how... Would have a major municipality, in fact the only one in the Gambia, there mm. are no green parks? Ah, actually, that depends on to how you perceive it. Uh, but uh, like I said to you, we, we are having a lot of plans on to the green, some of the green parks that we have. We found some not good at all. And we want to, we, we were having some intention. In fact, even the other one I was to... We, I was uh, working together with the present vice president, you know, that, that's the Green Park at Kotu, uh, for us to develop it. We are on to that uh, and for some time, and uh, it stops. But in fact, the last time I met her, she said we try to revive it again. Mm. Then when it comes to disaster management, one of the worst hit areas is the KMC, that is the Ibo Town Zone. What are you doing to change that situation? Ah, uh, this uh, most of those disasters are man meetings. Yeah, that's why we can have a solution, and they are man. Yeah, they are, they are man meetings, and we, we are trying to make some solutions, you know, out of it. But still, you know, it's difficult to lead. Very difficult. When you may come with your concepts, your ideas, and whatever, and you have you, the only thing that you have is to give it to your technicians to do the rest of the work. I do. I have a competent uh, workforce, but uh, sometimes uh, finance put us down, not to venture onto other areas that would cause us not to sustain. And just m trying to make a name, and it is not sustainable. Me, I'll never be part of that. When anything that I am doing should be sustainable. So you think the problem is the field workers on the ground are not doing their best? No, I'll not blame them for that much. But the people are also part of the, uh, that contribute towards those disasters that normally happen. How? Yes. Yeah, because some would, uh, you'll see some having compounds just by the river. Do they pay tax? Of course, everything is taxable. Then if they pay tax, it means technically you accepted them being there. No. We, yeah, because we if, if they are settling in an illegal place, they are squatters. No, 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 no. We no, no, no. It, you do not call that illegal places because it is given to them legally. By the state. Good. Then the state is part of the problem. Of course, yes. And that is KMC. Of course, yes. We are all part of the problem. This is what I'm saying. For us, we will collect anything, everything. Remember, this is a tax-based country. So anything that is taxable, of course, we we'll go and collect. But what, what is the final solution, you think, to solve that problem? Because That's every year the same No, no, no. We've gone to that level. We've gone to a level where we've, in fact, asked some of them to leave where they are living. That is to evacuate? Yes. And uh, some did. Some were compensated with land to leave. But still remains to be where they are. So that's that's a problem, you know. Uh, you see, like I said, government alone cannot do it at their machinery level. 
the people that don't even believe that they are part of government should be part of the solution and to see that government they are government like the like the because the the notion is uh, when you talk about government most people will think is the minister the president you know maybe and the permanent secretaries that are you know working at those at those big offices when government means all of us that in the participation should be all of us and it should be all of us business to make sure that some of those problems are solved without you know being the way it is at the present moment okay we're running out of time what unfinished business do you have it's the dumb site that's the unfinished business mm. so you would have loved to finish that before you leave Oh yes, I would have loved to, I would have smiled and give myself a bigger credit if I have caught the problem of the dump site. But for me, uh, to be honest to myself, anytime I pass Bakote, something comes out from me that I still don't do what is expected of me of that area. For that one, I would honestly say it, yes. And what's your message to the incoming mayor? Uh, for them to prepare uh, and, uh, you see, uh, to tell them uh, that I would equally love for them to come uh, because it's not one person who will complete everything. Let them come where I stop. They do better than I do. And uh, maybe the one following, uh, the one coming in also does the same thing. And then we have a municipality that everybody would enjoy tomorrow. For me, that's how I'm seeing it. I'm not jealous of anybody who is to come. I'll be very open to anyone who have that, uh, because I know I have the experience. I have that experience in council running, uh, more so in local governance. So anybody who is coming, of course, I'll give you that opportunity to have a touch base with me anytime. Because I'm a very, I'll be very free, I'm, I'll be a very free man who will be living as an independent somebody that is not working for anyone, uh, but for my family. Young Bokoli, Mayor of the KMC, thank you very much for being on the checkpoint. The pleasure. It's mine. Good evening and welcome to the checkpoint.